I've told you about the fancy dress. No. I've not told you about the fancy dress. No, you ain't, babe. The fancy dress party when I was living at me mum's. No. I have told you. You ain't told me. Mum, he said I ain't told him about the fancy dress party. She must have told you about the fancy dress party. Oh, she ain't. He says you ain't. I have told him. She says she has told you. She ain't told me. She ain't told you. <laughs> What happened? A fancy dress party, that's what happened. Wait, at a fancy dress party? No! Can you imagine? <laughs> Don't make me laugh! Don't start me off! Don't start him off! You started him off! Here we go! I nearly died, it was so funny. I was in agony, I laughed so much. Are you ready for this? I don't know if I am. Go on, Dad. Melanie has come as Shirley Temple, licking a big lollipop and tap dancing all over the gaff. <laughs> Melanie Baker, Mum's friend from aerobics. Worked in the multiplex. Got a cat with double paws. <laughs> she done that fun run, dressed as a bottle of Ginzano. I forgot to get sponsored. <laughs> With the big hands, she's come as posh spice. Which is a bit much because she must be lemon stone. <laughs> Halfway through the day, she says she ate posh spice, she's Carol Vorderman. Before she went on the detox, I nearly died. She's walloping herself around the kitchen saying, consonant or vowel, it was lethal. <laughs> Lisa Jackson, she's got she ain't got a costume and wants to know if she puts some ink toner on her face, can she come as Ainsley Harriet? <laughs> She can't say that. She don't mean nothing by it. She's deaf in one ear. <laughs> Shut up, will ya? We ain't got the funny bit yet. Well, don't tell me there's more. This is a classic. <laughs> Lunchtime, right? I've sent me mum down Sainsbury's to get the food. I'd have gone myself, but I promised Shelley I'd do her highlights before the party because she wanted to come as Kylie, and I said I'd do what I could, but I couldn't promise nothing because she's got hair like cotton wool. <laughs> so, I've gone armed with a list. I've got specific instructions to get... Four bags of sausage rolls, eight bags of chicken drumsticks, and an ounce lemon. Stop it! <laughs> well, you know what she's like when she gets in the shops, guaranteed she's going to bump into someone she knows, and when she starts yapping, that's it. List or no list, game over. It is out of control. <laughs> what are you like? You know what she's like. What are you like? You know what I'm like. <laughs> Come back from the shop, she's put the bag on the table, we've opened the bag, we've looked in the bag. What's in the bag? A tray of vegetarian chipolatas and a strawberry cheesecake. Well, I've looked at her like that. You looked at me like that. I've looked at both of them like this. We're all looking at each other like this. You know what she's done, didn't you? What's she done? She's bought the wrong thing! Oh my god! I know! Oh no! You are mental! Stop it! I'm gonna wet myself! I'm gonna wet myself as well! I have wet myself! <laughs> What's an unwaxed lemon? <laughs> wet <Wiggle! laughs> Elaine Figgis is one of a growing number of women prepared to go to extraordinary lengths to find love. Sadly, however, last year she suffered a setback when her husband of nine days was electrocuted on death row in his Texan penitentiary. But Elaine hasn't given up. This is Gummidge. He's my computer. Although don't call him a computer. He'll take offence. <laughs> My friend Tex at Lion Dancing Class, that's his country name, his real name's Roland. He says that Gummidge is my global pimp. Not exactly sure what a pimp is, to be honest, but... Um, although I know Gladys Knight had three of them. <laughs> oh, hang on. Paolo's just signed on. I better just tell him I'm busy, otherwise I'll never hear the last of it. There. Do you know, I've met people from all over the world. Off from this little chair. America, Brazil, Australia, Africa even. And where is Paolo from? Reading. <laughs> <laughs> Hank's just signed on. He's from Wisconsin. 
He's a lovely man, but he keeps sending me pictures of his penis. <laughs> Do you get a lot of that? No, as I say, I don't get to meet many of them because of the distance involved. <laughs> oh, you mean pictures of them? <laughs> oh, yeah, I get tons of them. <laughs> I don't encourage it, but very broad-minded. <laughs> Mind you, if it continues like this, I am going to have to get myself a bigger hard drive. <laughs> oh, hang on, who's this? Oh, oh, that's Kyle. He's an actor. Well, at least he says he is. Do you find a lot of people lie about themselves on internet chat rooms? I think, at the end of the day, you have to take everything with a pinch of salt. I mean, for example, this is the picture I use online. <laughs> Now, strictly speaking, that isn't actually me. <laughs> it's my friend Kath's daughter. But we're both Sagittarius with Gemini rising, so... <laughs> you can't get much closer than that. OK, what time does the film start? Two o'clock. Right, we've got enough time. Hi, guys! Welcome to Bibi Chase. I'm the waitress for today. My name's Amanda, but my friends call me Zebedee. I'm a fiery Taurian with my moon in Uranus. Careful, I'll do the jokes. Uh, can we see the menus? OK, guys, here's the deal. I can give you the menus, but we've got a special promotion on this week where if you can tell us what we've got on the menus, you get entered into our special mind reader draw. Uh, we'll just have some menus if that's OK, thank you. Table nine, ducking out of the mind reader draw! <laughs> OK, guys, here's your menus. And here's your menu, you cheeky little bunch kid. What's your name? Robbie. And how old are you, Robbie? Eight. Eight? I was eight when I was your age. <laughs> Oakley Dookley. And what does little Robbie want? I want a Captain Octopus fish burger, please. Aye, aye, Captain. And would you like soapy fries with that today for yourself? What are soapy fries? They're like curly fries, except they're straight to the taste of soap. <laughs> Just normal fries. I'll have um, a hot, hot, hot burger. Table nine going for hot, hot, hot burgers! for apple. Yum, yum. And aeroplane. Yum. Hmm? Tea is for train. And also for tired. <laughs> H is for haven't slept in weeks. And house. Mm. That's right, darling, because Mummy doesn't sleep anymore, does she, Molly? Mm? N is for no sleep for Mummy. <laughs> ah, what's R for, sweetheart? Do you know what R's for? It's for rabbit. Floppy, floppy bunny rabbit. And really need to go to bed. <laughs> P is for parents. F is for forever. K, well, K can be loud like kayak or silent as in knackered. <laughs> I is for igloo. That's where the Eskimos live. And also for I need to sleep so much I could vomit. <laughs> e is for bags under the eyes. E is for exhaustion and eternal suffering evermore and elephant. How's it going? Very well, thank you. Been here long? Five or ten minutes. Oh, you may as well bed yourself down for the night, then. I beg your pardon? 
Oh, I didn't mean with me. God, I'm not that easy. <laughs> I can see I'm going to have to keep my eye on you, aren't I? No, I just mean we're really understaffed at the moment. Really? Sorry, where are my manners? Would you like a rhubarb and custard? That's not for me, thank you. No. I'm not a big fan of boiled sweets myself, but it's nice to have something to suck on in between blanket vests, you know what I mean? <laughs> To that. It must be a relief uh, uh, to, to, to find time for a break. Oh, God, no, we're too busy for breaks. No, I've just been sent here to meet a new member of staff. Oh, uh, any luck finding him? Her. She's a her. Female doctor, more trouble than there were, if you ask me. I take it you get on better with the male doctors, then? Well, how can I put it? They don't allow pets in here, but I've had a cockatoo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I just thought, you're not a doctor, are you? No, I'm not a doctor. Why? No, it's just that you have that look about you, you know. The look of authority <laughs> can be very attractive in a man, if you know what I mean. <laughs> You're very kind. Um, you must have a continual supply of admirers. Well, I am seeing someone here at the moment, but it's not common knowledge. I don't kiss and tell. Good for you. I shag and shout. <laughs> so you better be careful. <laughs> No, no, seriously. It's rare to see an attractive man around the place without a wedding ring. Oh, I'm married. I just don't wear a ring. Oh, I see what you're saying. You like to keep your options open. No point in being in a stable if you can't ride a few of the horses, you know what I mean, no. <laughs> you do much riding? Sorry, I was talking about sex. <laughs> Yes, I know. Oh, nice one. <laughs> well, you know, you're only young once. Mind you, you can play many a good tune on an old fiddle, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I was talking about sex again. Yes, I know. <laughs> Great. So how about me and you have a bit of a fiddle tonight, then? Say seven o'clock? You could pick me up outside, are you need. Ah, Bernie. <laughs> I see you found each other. Dr. Walker, I got your memo about the new doctor, but I'm very sorry she's not here yet. What do you mean, she? Um, Dr. Hilary Donovan. Bernie, this is Sir Hilary Donovan. <laughs> what? Sir Hilary? You said you weren't a doctor. And I'm not. I'm a surgeon. I do hope Nurse Benazette hasn't been bothering you, Sir Hilary. On the contrary, she's been more than friendly. <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> Yes, let's. Uh, sir, excuse me, Your Highness. Are we still on for that fiddle at seven o'clock? Oh, please. Night one! Have any of your online relationships turned into anything more serious, Elaine? Well, as you know, Tanya, I had met my Prince Charming, but he was cruelly taken away from me. Jerry, God rest his soul, was a one-off. I was convinced no one could ever take his place. Until I met Mohammed. <laughs> Where is Mohammed? He's in Egypt. He's 24 and he sells spices outside Luxor Temple. <laughs> he looks so romantic. I sometimes think I'm living in a Barbara Cartman novel. Where are you finding the cultural differences? We've both had to make our sacrifices. Mohammed's had to buy a six-month pass for his local internet cafe, and I've had to change my religion. That must have been a very big decision. 
Not really. I've had to change to halal meats. I pray to the East five times a day. And a couple of weeks ago, Mohammed told me I'm not allowed to do the lottery. I still do the old scratch card. I mean, <laughs> he's not a fundamentalist. So has a date been set for the marriage? Not yet. No. We've not been without our setbacks. I keep sending him money to keep him going till he sells his spy store, but apparently Mohammed thinks that the man who delivers his post is a bit like fingered. Are you sure it's safe to be sending large amounts of money to someone you've only been chatting to for a few weeks? Tanya, you've got to understand something about being a Muslim. The word Islam actually means love. I send him money and he loves that. <laughs> All right, Nan. Oh, hello, darling. There's a nice surprise to find you here. I didn't want you coming home to an empty flat. How are you? Not bad, thank you, darling. It was very emotional, but yeah, I'm all right. Was it a big funeral? Oh, it was beautiful. Church was packed. She had seven cars follow her. Seven! I didn't think she knew that many people. And you want to see the food they laid on. Oh, it was out of this world. Hey, I'll sit down and make you a cup of tea. Yeah, I'm all right for the minute, thanks, lad. I had a couple of Guinness when we came back from the ground. <laughs> I didn't want them, really, but young Charlie Ford got them for me and I didn't want to be rude. No, of course not. Oh, it don't seem real, does it? I only see her last week. She was out there mopping that landing. Poor old Lena. Still, it's happy release for her, though, I suppose. Yeah. She were never the same after her Jackie died. She only went out once a week, got her pension, knocked it out on baby sham, came back, <laughs> came back, sang the top of her voice till three o'clock in the morning. Oh, I will miss her. Did you manage to eat anything, or shall I make you something now? No, I had a little summit while I was there, love. Nice plate of bob, bacon and potato salad, bowl of jelly deals, nice bit of crusty bed, couple of sausage rolls. You don't like to be rude. <laughs> She's gone. Come on, then. It'll be all right. Suppose it'll be me next. Now, don't talk like that. She didn't have anyone, did she, poor old Lena? She went from week to week without a living soul, come up and say, oh, God, help us, that ain't no way to go, is it? Oh, well. Rest in peace, Lena, love. <laughs> <laughs> She owed me money. <laughs> she owed me money, the woman. What are you talking about? I gave her 15 quid beginning of last week. She never gave it back. And it hardly matters now. What a fucking liberty. <laughs> it's typical of her, that is. She hardly knew she was going to have a heart attack and die before she could pay you back. Not fucking much, she did. <laughs> She felt the first twinge go down her arm and thought, that's it, I'll go and tap her across the road. <laughs> she was an artful cow. <laughs> Fifteen quid. I sent a reef worth twenty-five pound and all right, just worse. No, just leave it. I'll give you the money. I don't want your money. Don't you dare, don't you dare. I've got more money than a lot of you put together. Right, well, you won't miss that fifteen quid then. Here, any more talk like that and I shall leave it all to the cat's home. <laughs> what about them old girls who leave all their money to the cat's home? Oh, that do make me laugh. What do the cats want with it? <laughs> what do they care? They're fucking cats. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Go on a cruise? <laughs> all the little cats sailing round the world on a cat yacht? <laughs> Sipping champagne, getting all dressed up to have dinner with a the captain, they're fucking cats! <laughs> right, well, that's all sorted then. Would you like a cup of tea now? Yeah, lovely. Oh, there's a good boy. Go and put the kettle on, that's it. Here. We can have a couple of these with it and all. You've not brought those back from the wake? Of course I did. Didn't fancy him while I was there, but I knew I'd want some later. Always the same whenever I have a drink. Always fancy a nice bit of cake a couple of hours after. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. God, I hope no one saw you. I'll get in there and put the kettle on you. Or I won't let you have any of this cheese. <laughs> Hello. 
You mind? Very noisy. Terribly distracting. garlic. <laughs> You're late. Yeah, had to take a warm up to Uxbridge. Only just got back. Oh, it has been shocker here. Absolutely shocker, hasn't it, Vernon? Yeah, you're lucky you just missed the rush. Double cheeseburger. Yes, please. Double cheese for Neville. Thanks, Vernon. Yeah, you missed it all go off earlier. You'll never believe who was here. Go on. Oh, what's her name? American woman. Vernon, what's the name of that woman that was here earlier? About that big, blonde woman. Off the telly. Off the telly, you say? No, oh, married to a funny-looking little blonde with ginger hair. Madonna! <laughs> oh, right. So what was she doing up here, then? They were on their way to the garden centre. She bought one of them bolt-together barbecues last Saturday. And they're not going to run off nuts. Well, couldn't she just got some nuts from B and Q? Well, that's what I said, but she said they were funny size. Anyhow, they have a burger each, get back in their car and it wouldn't start. They run out petrol. Oh, dear. Apparently, she knew they needed to fill up, but she wouldn't because they'd been passing Esso garages and she only uses BP. Oh, right. Is that a political thing? No, apparently she's collecting the nectar points. <laughs> so anyway, Vernon gives a little ginger bloke a lift up to Sainsbury's garage. Meanwhile, I'm left here with her for 20 minutes and she starts banging on about Iraq. Oh, dear. I said, don't talk to me about Middle Eastern policies. I met Jeff Boone in a cash and carry last Thursday. I'm up to here with it. <laughs> and what we've been whittling on all day, me head's banging. Any sauce? Uh, no. Smash it. All right, see you tomorrow. See you later, take care. I believe, Elaine, that some of your friends are worried about you marrying a man who lives 2,000 miles away and who you've only spoken to via the internet. Tanya, this is the 21st century. People should realize anything is possible. We've got cordless phones, compact discs. I mean, just last night I was watching Sky Travel and they've got a chimpanzee in Las Vegas who can ride a bike while smoking a cigar. <laughs> We're not living in the dark ages anymore. So what's the plan? Well, the plan is I meet Mohammed at Heathrow and then we go straight to the registry office and get married. Oh, it's from Mohammed. No last minute nerves, I hope. Hmm? No. <laughs> No, I just asked him to let me know if the money I sent him yesterday went into his bank account. How much did you send him, Elaine? Well, what with tomorrow's airfare and various bits and bobs, it did come to a couple of thousand this time. What did the text say? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> He's a man of very few words. And not all those are in English. <laughs> I must be mad! <laughs> Right, well, I'm off. I've got to go and pick up my outfit. And yes, it is very special. And no, you can't get a sneak preview. <laughs> right, I shall see you a lot tomorrow. Once more into the bridge, dear friends. <laughs> Lauren, I'm sure you don't like staying behind any more than I do. 
But until you learn to focus more when you're in class and do the work set for the lesson, you're going to stay behind and do it in your own time. Are you an oven, miss? Excuse me? You're from the north, isn't it? Do your work, Lauren. Are you an oven, that? Why do you ask, Lauren? Because you speak funny, is it? That's enough. <laughs> I'm only asking a question. Can I ask a question? I'm only asking a question, that. I'm from Bristol, Lauren. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Are you a farmer, miss? <laughs> Lauren. Are you a farmer, Dad? Don't be ridiculous. You talk like a farmer. Carry on with your work. Why do you talk like a farmer, Lauren, Dad? I'm not going to tell you again. Do you live on a farm, miss? Lauren, be quiet. Miss, are you the farmer's wife? If you don't be... Are you the farmer's wife? No, I'm not. Are you on McDonald, miss? Don't be... Do you know I'm on McDonald, Stop miss? this. E-I-I-O, -I -I miss. Stop this nonsense. <laughs> you know perfectly well I'm not a farmer. Now, get back to your work immediately. Not being funny or nothing, miss, but you do smell like a farmer. Now, that's enough. <laughs> Is it the pig swill? Right. Miss, do you eat pig swill? Be quiet! I am not from the north and I'm not a farmer. Now let that be the end of it. No doubt you think yourself very amusing, but look around, Lauren. No one's here to see your little show. Now I suggest you pick up that book and start reading, because you are well on your way to coming bottom of your whole year. I'm above it. I'm bothered. I'm bothered. I'm bothered. Can you look at my face? Just look at my face. Is my face bothered? Is my face bothered? You sound ridiculous. You sound like a farmer. You're making a fool of yourself. I don't care because I'm bothered. Lauren, stop this right now. Come on. Look, just stop it. 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 Don't read the book. It's not my problem anymore. Miss? Have you got a guy milk for cares, miss? <laughs> she may be the face I can't forget A trace of pleasure or regret Maybe my treasure or the price I have to pay she may be the song that summer sings Maybe the chill that autumn brings Maybe a hundred different things Within the measure of a day No. I've not told you about the fancy dress. No, you ain't, babe. The fancy dress party when I was living at me mum's. No. I have told you. You ain't told me. Mum, he said I ain't told him about the fancy dress party. She must have told you about the fancy dress party. Oh, she ain't. He says you ain't. I have told him. She says she has told you. She ain't told me. She ain't told you. <laughs> What happened? A fancy dress party, that's what happened. We had a fancy dress party. No! Can you imagine? <laughs> Don't make me laugh! Don't start me off! Don't start him off! You started him off! Here we go! I nearly died, it was so funny. I was in agony, I laughed.